Greetings. Turn your Bibles, King James, to Jeremiah chapter 40. This is a continuation of the Jeremiah series. This is an interesting chapter right here. Jeremiah chapter 40, verse 1. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. You know, John 8, 12. Verse 1. Then the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord after that, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had let him go from Ramah, where he had taken him, being bound in chains, among all that were carried away captive of Jerusalem and Judah, which were carried away captive unto Babylon. And the captain of the guard took Jeremiah and said unto him, Listen to this. The Lord thy God hath pronounced this evil upon this place. Now this is the captain of the guard saying this. The Lord thy God hath pronounced this evil upon this place. Now the Lord hath brought it and done according as he hath said. Because ye have sinned against the Lord and have not obeyed his voice. Therefore this thing is come upon you. You know what, people? You could apply. You could. You could hear the same exact words when the bad things happen to the England, anybody, anywhere in the European Union, or in the USA, or I should say the USSA, the United Soviet States of America. Now this is the captain of the guard speaking, verse four. And now, behold, I loose thee this day from the chains which were upon thine hand. If it seem good unto thee to come with me into Babylon, come, and I will look well unto thee. So, if you want to come to Babylon, come to Babylon with me. We'll look after you. You'll be all right. We'll, we'll, you'll be okay. We'll, we'll take care of you. But if it seem ill unto thee to come with me into Babylon, forbear. Behold, all the land is before thee. Whither it seemeth good and convenient for thee to go, thither go. In other words, all the land here is before you, anywhere that you want to go. You want to go north, south, east, west, anywhere you want to go, the whole land is before you. Go wherever you feel like. Whither it seemeth good and convenient for thee to go, thither go. Verse 5. Now when he was not yet gone back, he said, Go back also to Gebaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shapham, whom the king of Babylon hath made governor over the cities of Judah, and dwell with him among the people, or go wheresoever it seemeth convenient unto thee to go. So you can go to Babylon. You can go back to living in Judah or wherever else you want to go. Go wherever you want to go. Uh, and dwell with him among the people or go wheresoever it seemeth convenient unto thee to go. So the captain of the guard gave him victuals, food, and a reward and let him go. So evidently they gave him food and probably some money and other things that he was going to need uh, to get by and let him go. Then went Jeremiah unto Gibaliah, the son of Ahikam, to Mizpah, and dwelt with him among the people that were left in the land. Verse 7. Now when all the captains of the forces which were in the fields, even they and their men, heard that the king of Babylon had made Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, governor in the land, and had committed unto him men and women and children, and of the poor of the land, of them that were not carried away captive to Babylon. Now, you want people that know the area to take care of the crops, you know. I mean, you want people that are familiar with the area and, you know, know when the rains come, when to plant, when to harvest, 
you know, you don't want to take somebody that's a farmer in another part of the world or country and then bring them somewhere else. You want the people that have lived there to take care of the crops. And obviously, uh, they're going to be giving a portion of the crops as taxes to the Babylonians, the Chaldeans. So that's a smart thing to do. You know, that's what you call taxes. So, so there were men, women, children, and of the poor of the land, of them that were not carried away captive to Babylon. Then they came to Gedaliah to Mizpah, even Ishmael. Ishmael, remember, he was the... Uh, I mean, this is not the Ishmael of Genesis, no. But he's named after him. You know, Ishmael was the firstborn son of Abraham, but this is a different Ishmael. Uh, then they came to Gedaliah, to Mizpah, even Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, Nethaniah and Johanan, and Jonathan, the sons of Caria and Sariah, the son of Tanhumeth, and the sons of Ephi, the Nito Farothite, and Jeroriah, the son of Machathite, they and their men. Yeah, I'm probably pronouncing those wrong. Oh, I'm sure of it. And Gedaliah, the son of Ahiakam, the son of Shephan, swear unto them and to their men, saying, Fear not to serve the Chaldeans. Dwell in the land and serve the king of Babylon, and it shall be well with you. As for me, behold, I will dwell at Mizpah to serve the Chaldeans, which will come unto us. But ye, gather ye wine and summer fruits and oil, and put them in your vessels, and dwell in your cities that ye have taken. Likewise, when all the Jews that were in Moab and among the Ammonites and in Edom. Now remember, Moab, Ammon, and Edom were enemies of the Lord. But yet these people were so afraid. They were so afraid of the Babylonians that they would rather live with the enemy. I guess they didn't get the memo from Jeremiah. And probably some of them probably took wives or husbands. Likewise, when all the Jews that were in Moab and among the Ammonites and in Edom and that were in all the countries heard that the king of Babylon had left a remnant of Judah and that he had set over them, Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shephan, even all the Jews returned out of all the places whither they were driven and came to the land of Judah to Gedaliah unto Mizpah and gathered wine and summer fruits very much. Moreover, Yohan, Yohanan, the son of Kariah, Kari, and all the captains of the forces that were in the fields came to Ged, Gedaliah to Mizpah and said unto him, Dost thou certainly know that Balas, the king of the Ammonites, hath sent Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, to slay thee. Uh, Balas, B-A-A-L-I-S, the king of the Ammonites. His, his name is a contraction, well, part of Baal, which is the lord of Satanism, right? So here it is. This guy's warning him. Verse 14, And said unto him, Dost thou certainly know that Balas, the king of the Ammonites, hath sent Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, to slay thee? But Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, believed them not. Hmm. Then Johanan, the son of Kariah spake to Gedaliah in Mizpah, secretly saying, Let me go, I pray thee, and I will slay Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, and no man shall know it. Wherefore should he slay thee, 
that all the Jews which are gathered unto thee should be scattered, and the remnant in Judah perish. But Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, said unto Johanan, the son of Korea, Thou shalt not do this thing, for thou speakest falsely of Ishmael. Well, that's going to cost you, buddy boy. Because I'm telling you, a king with the name of Baal, who was an Ammonite, the Lord never spoke very kindly of the Ammonites and the Moabites. How about Deuteronomy 23, verse 3? An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter, shall not enter, enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to their tenth generation, shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. You see, I'm sure they intermarried with the uh, Canaanites and polluted their seed line. But boy, you won't hear that taught in a 501c3 uh, churches. They absolutely don't want you to know that. They want you to think, oh, everybody's got a chance at salvation. Well, why did the Lord say to kill all the Canaanites? But they didn't do it. They didn't do it. So here it is. You got the king of the uh, king, the uh, king with the word name of Baalus, who sent somebody to kill the governor over Judah because they were enemies. So, all right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen.